back to PGL Spring Tavern Tales. We are here at day two of the tournament. Three matches left. We have the top 16 today. Scruffy versus Crane is the next match. But I'm sitting here with Tessin and uh, Raven. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying the tournament so far. Okay. Um, it's been uh, really good. I'm looking forward to see who uh, finishes up making it to top eight tomorrow. And for you? I'm doing great. Um, looking really forward to see who's going to win this game. Mm -hmm. it okay. will be do, do you like practice maybe with Crane or, or yeah like Crane is from Denmark like me like mm -hmm. I know him and I know his lineup and what he's bringing for this game so okay so you can get us an uh, exact insight into his mind if yeah, I can say so for sure <laughs> like yeah okay that's game. awesome that's awesome because I always like to have someone on th on the couch that knows personally he knows what they're talking about <laughs> yeah that's also true but <laughs> if someone knows personally a player then he can bring something new to the table because you know uh, we as casters might not be aware of certain things that a yeah. uh, person has in his game style, uh, in his game plan, in his game style, in his f egg in his uh, in his style of playing. Right? Crane is known for playing warrior. We don't know anything about Scruffy, but hopefully we'll get to know him better um, during the video that we have uh, prepared. So let's watch the videos. Uh, my name is Simon Roundhouse and my gamer name is Crane 33 I'm 27 from Denmark and I'm pretty known for getting high ranks on Litten and for playing Painter Warrior. I'm Pavel Scruffy Anik. I live in Czech Republic. Uh, I play for Team Fraternitas, which is a local team. We have a League of Legends section, a Hearthstone section and uh, a Counter-Strike. Uh, this is my first bigger tournament, so I'm really excited and I made it to the top 16, it's awesome. In the first match I had a few missteps, but I also had a lot of good decisions and good overall strategy. I think, and then after that I played super well, some of the best that I've played in a while. Now, uh, I've had a couple of events where I had some missteps that I was unhappy about, but I think in this uh, in, in the important matches, which was until I had 3-0 and was qualified, I played super good. And then, I mean, the last two matches didn't matter. I think I played also reasonably well, but I lost them. But as I said, I didn't, it didn't matter. I knew I was qualified. And the top 16 is all. It's not the first event I tried to qualify for, but uh, uh, the qualifiers were like not, not easy, but the, the thing that 8 out of 128 players are going here was like, mm, it wasn't that hard, like some, if you play some other qualifiers you have to win like 8 games in a row or something like that and this was like 4 games and that's it. So maybe it was easier than other I tried. To prepare decks you, first of all you have to look at like the players who had the event and try to figure out what's What's the current state of the meta in the game overall? But also like what what will pe how will people read into that and what will they bring? So you always have to like predict the meta. And then you have to look at yourself, like what what am I good at? What like which decks can I actually bring without sucking with them? Because even if you have a good strategy for the format, you actually need to be actually playing the decks well. Uh, so like a bit of a mixture of that. I I I've actually brought Manilog, which I haven't played too much just recently, but I feel like I'm a pretty well-rounded player, I can play pretty much anything, and I felt like it was a good LHS uh, deck. Uh, obviously I also brought Peyton Warrior just because uh, I'm so strong with it. And maybe for something like the next round it will be different, because people know that they'll have to face me. So, we knew a lot of things now about the players. Uh, we knew already that Crane is a warrior player. I'm really interested if he will bring a freeze mage though today. Because we didn't see the classes today yet, right? And they can change the lineup for, for today after they will advance. Of course, they are allowed to do that for the last day too. But today they are strictly preparing for a certain opponent. So it all, it's all about preparation, all about scouting, all about uh, the knowledge that they, br uh, that they brought from the day one. Yeah, and um, we saw Crane actually do really well with his Freeze Mage in the first game mm -hmm. yesterday. 
But it's an uh, interesting dynamic as well with these two players. We have Crane, who's really seasoned. He's been playing the game for a long time, plays in every single Open ever and all these tournaments. And then we have Scruffy, who's admittedly said, like, this is my first big tournament. I like his confidence, though, saying, oh, the qualifier was easy. It's fine. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be cool just to see how these two guys match up, sort of experience versus sort of the, the mm -hmm. newer guy on the block, so to speak. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. Like, Crane is really used to this, and he prepared a lot, like, being with a lot of good players before the tournament. And mm -hmm. I spoke with him last night, and I believe he's ready for it. Okay. So, let's see what Scrabby got. Well, about the qualifiers, actually, he touched on a really important topic, that uh, this qualifiers were actually allowing not the top one, top two players to qualify for the main event, but the top eight from each qualifier, right? So, you didn't have to win so much game uh, so many games uh, as usual which i think is a good change because it um it allows the tournaments to be bigger right it does it's it, it it's not narrowing down the player pool to just few lucky people that went through the grueling yeah from especially the, the grueling way right be because we have a in, you know like you say normal qualifiers like the top one or maybe two go through and that can be really rough for the people who get like top four or something like going so far playing so many exactly. games and not quite making it i've seen the predictions now and uh it looks like Twitter's definitely behind Crane on this one. Twitch was behind Crane too, if I remember. 64, was it? And 76 and Ghost of Gaming as well. has got everything to play for now. He's going to tilt those yep. percentages the other way after this set, potentially. For Crane, it's also important to perform now um, better than usual, I would say. Because he's still lacking that breakout performance. Like yeah. Everyone in this scene knows Crane. Uh, in the pro scene, they practice with him. They know he's an outstanding warrior player. But somehow he's not breaking through uh, the tournaments yet. So he has... From his point of view, he has to um, prove the pro players that he can perform well in tournament. But for Scruffy, this is the first time playing in a tournament, like in a broadcast tournament as well. So for him, it's just important to have any kind of result, basically, right? For him, being top 16 here is already a big step. So everything now fo forward is just um, icing on the cake. Yeah, I mean, we saw him uh, get you know super happy about getting top 16 uh, in the tournament, which is pretty reasonable. You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty understandable because he's right. You know, getting top 16 in this is is really good. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting just to see like again just the experience versus like the sort of newer person to the tournaments. And uh, yeah, everything to play for on both sides. Obviously, this moves on to uh, top eight tomorrow. And uh, and and yeah, Crane's going to be really hungry for that big win. Uh, and you know, we see Scruffy's just going to play and you know enjoy his, his experience and potentially you know take the set. What do you think of the uh, the lineups, Tessin? Yeah, like, I know that Crane is playing some... The, the Rawia will be Patron for sure, that's expected. The Rogue, mm, I'm really not sure about that. I thought he would bring Warlock. Um. No, see, so he changed and he's not using a mage anymore, which is, a, I think, a good move when your opponent knows that you're playing a freeze mage, so he might bring Druid Warrior, and which is actually happening, because Scrafia has both of those classes, which are... Basically, a free, almost a free win against a freeze mage, right? I'm, t I'm, I'm, uh, I'm exaggerating. In <laughs> exaggerating. I'm speaking in like <coughs> ultimate, um, ultimate outcomes of the games. But when when it comes to card games, and 70-30 matchup is heavily favoring yeah. one of the players, right? Yep, so uh, we are starting with the Warrior versus Druid, and really interesting as well that the Druid's actually got the uh, Harrison Jones in it. So, uh, he, you know, he knows he's playing against Crane here. He knows he favors that Warrior class, and, uh, you know, it can do some work against all three of these classes if the Druid can actually take the win. Yeah, it's a really important game, though. Like, uh, can he keep going with the Harrison Druid and be the other decks? Like, Crane is playing three weapon classes, Warrior, Rogue, Paladin. So, I believe the first game here is really important. If Crane can take this victory, it will look really good for him. Yeah, and Scruffy's actually got off to a, a, a reasonable start here with the um, with the wild growth. He has shade next turn, uh, if he wants slightly off curve, of course, but that's still fine. And the wrath to deal with this girl if he feels it's uh, you know, too crazy. But I think we might just see the shade instead. Is, is there much value in actually just like wrath hero power now? I, I don't think so. No, I believe you're right. There will come a shade, I think. Oh, oh, oh he's okay. deciding. He, he <laughs> has options. Yeah, cause I, I don't know. Like the the wrath's fine because it. You know, it stops, uh, say, like a Frothing Berserker coming down next turn and causing some more issues. But I like just getting the shade on the board, letting it build up the health so that the whirlwind effects aren't too detrimental. Yeah, and it allows him to kill the um, the ghoul anyway, right? So if there's a Frothing Berserker, then he's allowed to destroy both because you can play Wrath and uh, attack with the with the uh, with the shade of the unstable ghoul, so you're dealing with two problems uh, yeah. uh, with one stone, basically. So the question is, will Crane go for Frothing Berserk or Acolyte of Pain? 
I believe. Okay, he's going for that. Yeah, yeah so he's just finding the card draw, and maybe, maybe because the shade is down, he's like, actually, yes, you know, a wrath could come down and, and lock mm -hmm. my froth and berserker out pretty hard. Whereas if a wrath goes on the acolyte. You know, the, the shade either runs into the ghoul and then, you know, he's on one health, which is very easy to deal with, or it just stays there, uh, stays stealth. And uh, also, the Wrath on five mana as well sort of greatly reduces the druid's abilities uh, in terms of using the, the full mana curve. That's true. Uh, like, having uh, two mana use on turn five limits the options for the druid player, but when you think about it, if your opponent doesn't have an option to use the Wrath this turn, he will develop the board, and when he will develop the board, then you have a chance to draw weapons and get the maximum value out of your uh, Unstable Ghoul and the AoE damage, right? And if he actually expose, exposes the, the Shade, that's okay for, for the Warrior as well, right? We'll see how it goes like next in the upcoming turns, because for, for Crane, it's crucial to get the weapons as soon as possible. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a chance here of drawing it, and just sacrifice the ghoul and then the acolyte of pain just to get the weapon out there because there's like four weapons in the deck at least uh, probably just four but um, that's the minimum amount and he is three six seven eight nine cards deep eight cards deep so four to twenty two to draw a weapon he will have multiple draws yeah yeah and I think the, the weapons are actually uh, you know super important in this matchup like getting the death spy on board is pretty huge Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a perfect draw too. Now it allows to trade with the Arcade of Pain, get three draws from it, and kill the Azure Drake as well. If he goes for Whirlwind or anything AoE, he can also kill the Shade. Yeah, yeah, if he attacks him with the Ghoul and then Whirlwinds again. I, I think huge. he will just Battle ignore rage. that. Yeah, so just tune to just bank the, the big Battle Rage there, because that's actually pretty huge. And we do see he does draw into Despite as well, so it's pretty nice. He does get to clear off the Drake. And also, he's, you know, like the whirlwind play definitely helps versus the shade, but he gets to hold on to it now in case of something like patrons. Yeah, which is pretty sure. good as well. He got the death fight. <laughs> he drew like million cards. Yeah. <laughs> so the chance of drawing a weapon were quite high, and yeah. I'm sure that uh, Scruffy now kind of regrets not killing the acolyte of pain when he had the chance. Yeah, and this hand actually is really rough. For, for Scruffy, there's nothing good you want to do with this. Like he did, just draw one. He might, he might even just cycle again. Although I think the Rat's going to be a useful tool versus the uh, patrons potentially later on. Against the patrons, there's the combo, right? And um, probably the, the patrons will not happen until turn six. Yeah. Right. So if you if you manage to play the Emperor next turn, and then you will have the combo for the upcoming turn. So it's kind of okay to deal with the patrons at uh, that point, right? Yeah. The Horizon Jones will also be important because I'm kind of thinking about developing the Death Spite right now. Yeah, I think you naturally want to develop the, the Death Spite uh, to be able to bring the shades out there. Um, who, like, it's a, it's a tough one here because there is still Combo and Emperor and, you know, like Harrison in hand. So, like, who, who do you think is actually ahead here? Yeah, um, it's really tough. Like, I believe Crane thinks he's ahead because of the hand, but since there's a Harrison on the opponent's hand, it can be really tough. Um, but I think Crane. Uh, got a good chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cards. And the um, it, what's I think the, the big problem here is he didn't kill the shade off. So um, you know, it's still growing. It's still now like pretty much uh, not vulnerable to whirlwind effects because there's just not a big chance that it's going to be three whirlwind effects stacked up one after the other. So uh, it's pretty nice. And drawing to Lothab is actually pretty good as well because you lock out another turn where the, you know they can build the big patron board up. Lothab will be super important against the patron. Especially with a huge hand like that for for Crane, right? It probably will lock down like, at least half of the hand to be even playable at some point in the game. So playing it before comboing out will be huge. Yeah, and I believe Shafi wants to take the game uh, down pretty soon, like he attacked with the shade, and he got a combo on the hand with Emperor. So yeah, this is looking at. It's still really weird though, because you know when a patron warrior's got so many cards in hand and so many options, it's always dangerous. But Scruff has been able to just uh, keep on top of this a little bit. Uh, this Berserker's uh, there's no easy way to deal with this. I mean, like Hero Power Wrath's okay, but I don't think you really want to sink uh, like Force of Nature, you know, into it or anything like that. That might be overkill. Um, no, I think you just play the the Emperor and just Darkness's Aspirant 
ignore the the farting berserker at this point. Yeah, I believe so as well. You you need that um, you need some board presence, and your opponent just used an execute. Although he did draw almost his entire deck yeah. at this point. <laughs> he did just draw everything, so yeah, yeah. you've got to work your way around that. But I agree, I think Emperor is pretty good here. And also, the thing you do with Emperor is, one, it's got like Hyper Taunt, so it, it will die next turn almost certainly. Mm -hmm. um, but also, there's now the threat in Crane's mind of like, wow, you know, he's actually reduced a lot of Druid cards there. Like, what can he do to me the following turns? Yep, that's true that the, the threat is real and you're not, you're not gonna know what are you playing against right now because innervate can change a lot of stuff and when you're aware that there are like uh, there are three and a half innervate for free for the druid player in the hand right now this changes a lot of the dynamic of uh, and predictions of what kind of opponent can do yeah for sure i believe Kryn is gonna go for the patrons here he got a good chance he can execute at the same time yeah, I think this is the turn he just has to, right? He's sitting on two patrons in hand, a lot of activators, uh, and even the ghoul as well if he wants to try and uh, squeeze that. And he wouldn't be able to whirlwind though, so I think we are just going to see the, uh, the inner rage. Into well, whirlwind. he can still play Dread Corsair alongside, yeah. so why not? Uh, will he go execute? I believe when he can. Yeah, I, I kind of like this. I think like the Frothing Berserker is such a big threat. Also, we, we can see it as a big game hunter in hand, but he gets eight damage there, and suddenly like there's a real chance that he could die next turn if, if this board isn't answered. Like I said, we do see that the BGH is in hand for, uh, for Scruffy, so he can deal with the Frothing. But eight. then there's still four pages on the board, right? So is this the turn when you need to play both big game hunter and the combo because of the Emperor? Uh, yeah, I think it might be, and just leave the five. Well, no, you can kill everything, right? You just take five damage. Yep. Oh no, you take three because you trade to take three two anyway. Oh he's wait. Gonna go for the he's wrath instead. Wrath. Okay. So maybe he's just confident that. Oh. Yeah, he can clear if he uses his hit to kill the three two. Pick. Okay, but it's uh, kind of weird that he didn't use the big game hunter right now just to build up the board and push his opponent to use the weapon against the big game hunter. Yeah, I just think leave a minion on the board as well. Like you get the BGH, right? So uh, you know that's a, a kind of an interesting one. Um, We'll see how it works out. See if holding on to that big game hunter is actually going to be worthwhile. Obviously, it's a bit different for us because we can see it as a yeah, grom in hand, but it just feels like a good opportunity to use BGH and then get that body on the board as well. Just usually when you play against a patron, you're losing to Gromash because he's killing you. Yeah, the you yeah, it's a kill turn, right? Yeah, and you don't have an option to use the big game hunter uh, at any point in the game. So using the big game hunter right now would be, I guess, valuable. If I can, uh, see how that goes. Still low tip is there, but it will have little to none impact right now because the warrior is low on cards and all almost all of the spells were used. Two battle rages, two whirlwinds, inner, inner rage, rage, two executes, and um, what else is there? Mm -hmm. It's probably most of the spells he's used, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is crazy though, because the board's so big. Like, the, the low tab doesn't do too much at all. Um, it's good to get it down, obviously, because, you know, you can squeeze it in, which is fine. Um, you know, it's still going to do some work, but again, the Death Spike draw is, is going to be pretty nice just to really add, add on to this pressure, because the Warrior's not actually on that low health. He's actually feeling pretty okay at 25 at the 25 moment. 25, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that was an amazing draw. First trade with the Arcolite of Pain, see if it, that changes your draw. Because you can go for the... Unstable Ghoul and Grim Patron this turn also. He could also just keep the Acolyte and trade with the Cruel Taskmaster and Weapon and go face. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty reasonable actually. Because the thing is, you still have two 3 3 taunts on the board and you've already seen a uh, Force of Nature. So uh, that, that might be okay if he wants to be more aggressive and finish up with the weapon the following turn. No problem. Yeah, Crane sees it. Oh, you called it. You do know Crane well. Good job. Nine damage to the face. Yeah, Aggressive that's stance, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, I like not playing the ghoul as well. The ghoul like does little to nothing uh, on this board, except just another taunt, but with two you're probably feeling pretty good. Such a shame that you can't charge the ghoul anymore. Really low <laughs> With the Warsaw really? Commander. It's and such a shame the deck isn't insane anymore, <laughs> even though yeah. it's still good after the nerf. <laughs> It was just too good. Were you a big fan of Patron, Lothar? Uh, I was a fan of the game design of the deck and how okay. it was like how it evolved during the game. 
but the power level of the cards inside the deck were just, you know, out of out of um, scale, Control, yeah. out of scale, and then, um, that was the problem. With the deck. But I, I love how it, how the synergy worked the whole deck. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, there is that Grom. Are we ever? Are, are we gonna see the BGH? Nope. Oh no, because that's lethal. Oh, yeah, that's lethal. <laughs> and that, that's better. the point, Lothar. That's yeah. the point, isn't it? You see Grom for the finisher, so kind of interesting. He didn't choose the uh, the BGH on the turn just to snipe the frothing straight away. So uh, yeah, that's uh, gonna be the first game to Crane. Probably feeling confident taking that first game with a deck he's pretty much known for, right? Yeah, and he now he can stick to it. So maybe he'll get uh, another win with it. Or maybe he just even free out uh, with his favorite deck, that his his most precious deck, right? Because he has the mm, uh, he said it himself that this is the best deck, this is his best deck, and he knows how to play it, and he feels more most confident with it. So it's very important to have still that in your sleeve. Yeah, I, I imagine Crane is pretty happy with uh, the last hero standing format here, where it's like, I know, I'll start with my Patron Warrior <laughs> and just 3-0 you. Yeah. But, you know, definitely off to a good start. We can see some of the plays here, and um, uh, this was obviously a, pr a pretty decent turn. We can get Patrons onto a massive frothing. And I think mm -hmm. the Execute was really key here as well, because it didn't require the frothing to trade in, um, and he could just remove the uh, yeah. the Emperor quite easily. Yeah. That's true. Well, I was thinking back then about the, the Red Sea Cursor, but you're right, probably just killing the, the, the Emperor was way more valuable than developing another body on the board when there's already four free attack minions. Right? Yeah, and there's so many threats, you know, like, um, it's kind of uh, difficult to deal with when you've got, uh, like, normally you see, like, a big frothing, and that's the main threat, or patrons, and that's the threat, whereas when you can put both on the board, like, that's pretty ridiculous. Yep, that's true. So, Scruffy has left a Warlock and a Warrior. I imagine he might be playing war Control Warrior because he was preparing pr probably against Freeze Mage and Patron Warrior at the same time. So, if that's the case, then his uh, Control Warrior would have great chances against um, the Patron Warrior, right? With multiple brawls and weapons, of course, bashes, that, that kind of stuff that can easily battle um, the blow out of proportion side of the uh, of the board from Patron Warrior. Yeah, I for sure believe if he got Control Warrior, he will bring it right now. It's a big counter, double roll probably, and yeah, it will give uh, Crane problems. But I believe Crane is fine. He won against the deck with Harrison Jones, and I don't believe he will play more than one deck with Harrison, so... Mm -hmm. um, imagine if it's Patron Warrior and he cues Patron Warrior into Patron Warrior against oh. Crane. That's that like that's just a death double wish. Bro <laughs> that means he plays double brawl. Oh, imagine. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, that's so that nice little watch. So that's a nice watch there. Well, that's thank you. Pretty nice. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, but that that would be crazy. But I agree with you, you guys. I mean, like, it, if he locks in the warrior, then you'd imagine it is, it's going to be the control one. When when you've got time to prep against someone like Crane, like you can really do your homework. Well, and he's quite well known, so doing that homework is probably pretty easy. You can still play uh, a warlock if it plays multiple AOE, like Hellfire, Shadow Flames. You should pr yeah. you should feel pretty comfortable with yeah. that matchup too, right? Yeah. It all depends on uh, how do you rate your not only your decks but how do you rate yourself with with that current yeah. deck that you want to play. It does look like it is going to be Control Warrior, so we can see the Alex Straza, the Shield Slam, and the Big Game Hunter. Uh, so um, you know, it, it, there's an odd chance it could be a very strangely teched uh, uh, Patron Warrior, but now with the no, Sylvanas, so I'm, I'm pretty confident it's Control. Probably not. The Sylvanas kind of gives it out. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Control Warrior for sure. So what does the Patron Warrior have to do in this matchup to beat the Control Warrior? Yeah, I actually spoke with Crane about it before, and <laughs> his tactic is to play like the opponent doesn't have a brawl. He will for sure go for Death by turn 4, and Grim Patron if he can turn 5, with a Dread Corsair to protect one, so... I yeah, believe I, that is tech tech. Yeah, I agree. I think it's like, we, when, when there's a card that shuts down your deck so hard, you kind of just have to pretend it doesn't exist. And, you know, if it does, then fine. Like you said, uh, Crane actually got the win versus a uh, Harrison uh, Jones Tech Druid, which is going to feel pretty good. Uh, so he's probably happy with the one win, and then he can deal with what's, you know, what's coming from the control. Right? If he loses, but, you know, sometimes they don't draw a brawl, so it's yep. always the opportunity. For sure. And I believe that Crane... Uh, got a really good deck to counter the control area, so he's fine in this situation. But for sure trying to win. Well, Crane most likely has has to go for the, a face patron team, right? But he needs the patron. And yep. he lack, lacks card draw right now. The only way of drawing cards is the Acolyte of Pain. And you don't want to use the Wheel Wind usually before you play the patron. Right? Just to cycle. 
I really like this turn though, because something you can try and get around the brawl is by creating an, enough of an intimidating board that the warrior feels they sort of have to brawl this board, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it isn't patrons, and then you can maybe go into it. It doesn't happen too often, but it's definitely something you can try if the opportunity arises. Good point. For sure. And now also, um, killing the free free minion is very important just to make way to clear the Frozen Berserker. Uh, but uh, my guess is that Crank would, even if you had the chance to spam the board and cycle, probably would like to avoid the execute from his opponent, right? Because he doesn't want to damage his own Frozen Berserker at this point. So it's either develop the weapon or just go for the Acolyte of Pain and Ruin. But as I said, I, I think there's a lot of value of it not damaging your own minion to just play into an execute. Yep. For sure. And Green is still not sure if uh, his opponent is playing Control Warrior. Or Patron. So I believe he wants to go for the Death Bite. Well, I'm sure that Crane made some assumptions that his opponent would like to counter his decks, right? And he was, as I said, playing back then the, the Mage and the Patron one. And like right? I said earlier, let's be honest, if someone locks in Patron versus Crane when they have any other option and he's <laughs> playing Patron, you've got to think this guy's either crazy or, <laughs> or it's Control Warrior, because it's one of those decks that I wouldn't like to play Patron Mirror versus Crane. I know I'd get trashed pretty hard. So uh, this is looking... Um, Pretty, it's looking okay for Scruffy. His, his health actually, you know, teetering quite low, which can definitely be dangerous, especially because we can see Crane actually has Grom in hand. But it's whether Crane can just push that extra, bit, you know, bit of damage. He's already used one charge of the Death Bite, so uh, it's not like he has two more charges so he really low. He does choose to take down that Acolyte and just reduce down the Warrior's card draw capabilities whilst gaining his own. And Doctor Boom's a pretty good draw. Maybe would have liked to have one more mana next turn to just slam it down, but still, that's a, a pretty good. Ju just again for the Boom bots to be able to push some extra damage. I wasn't aware that um, Crane has a Doctor Boom in this iteration of his patron. It does change a lot. Like an example, the Big Game Hunter that we saw last uh, last game had another target. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it definitely could be a surprise because we didn't even, like, on stream yesterday, we saw Crane 3-0 with Freeze Mage. No. So mm -hmm. we didn't actually see him play, uh, play his patron back on stream, I believe. Uh, this is a pretty good turn. Uh, just dropping the Shield Maid in there, gaining the armor back up, uh, and still presenting a large threat. And he's just seen Death Bite, right? So he's uh, probably feeling pretty good. He still has a Brawl now, which is key. Although Crane's uh, still digging for those patrons at some point. But maybe with Boom, he can make it work without, especially now he has a second Death Bite. Yeah, for sure. And I believe his draw there was pretty good. Yep. That's also okay. a slot policy of the day. Okay. But this is interesting. We didn't see a sludge build on patrons for quite some time. I mean, doesn't that's the other option of winning against the Contra Warrior, right? You, as you said, you, you put the pressure on the board, which is named Grim Patron. So you want the, the opponent to react to those minions first, and then you try to squeeze those patrons in after the big threats were being played, just, you know, a card for a card. Yeah, and, and they, again, just uh, not to talk up Crane's Patron play so much, but he is good. But when he includes sort of different, slightly different cards in, in a deck like Patron, you know he's tried and tested those cards. So uh, really interesting to see these like, slightly different uh, uh, ways to deal with this. And this is going to be a pretty good uh, kill on Sylvanas, so and then just slamming Dr. Boom's going to feel pretty reasonable considering he still has Grom and Whirlwind available uh, on not the next turn, but the turn after. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about the Battle Rage for a second, but I was like, nah, it's turn 7. Yeah. Most likely you would like to play the Dr. Boom. So what, what, what do you think about Dr. Boom Voucher in, in uh, Crane's Patron? Yeah, <laughs> actually I knew it before. I believe me and Crane are playing the same Patron list for this tournament. Oh, okay. I'm doing it as well, so... Oh! <laughs> 8 damage there. from the bombs. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Feels bad. The the build just helping a lot in the current meet and it's really good against the face shamans. That's the reason. Uh, okay. It's good to know. I'll um hmm. Yeah, I mean well, I, you I can't guess. really do much. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was, I was looking at the hand and being like, I guess you just play Belcher. <laughs> but Armor Smith behind the Belcher is always a great set. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, uh, the current list of, of Crane, I believe, doesn't play um, shield bashes, right? shield smashes, sorry. So it, it's just a benefit of getting the the life, but it doesn't build up the the uh, the options to clear up the board. 
Yeah, and it's a minion that kind of has to be answered, right? It's not a threat on its own, but its ability give, you know makes it more and more awkward for the opponent to deal with. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Well, this has to be a battle rage turn. So most Strike. likely attack first with the armor smith, get the damage, then battle rage, see what, those hap what will happen. Look at all those lovely whirlwind effects. Two ghouls, two whirlwinds, go. <laughs> this is pretty nice, though, because the weapon is actually going to perform dual roles of uh, clearing off the second half of this Belcher. And next turn, it's an additional three damage. So you can actually hit for uh, 13 next turn with the uh, just with the Grom and the weapon and the Grom prop. That's true. Yeah, this game is pretty close compared to it's a really tough matchup for Crane, but I believe, oh, that's the just a car. Yeah. That will change <laughs> yeah. a lot. Oh, that's <laughs> definitely a card. <laughs> Six armor in one turn, and then four armor every single turn. That will change a lot. For sure, if he's going for it. Wait, wait, oh, should you bash that? I mean, you probably will kill it with the bomb. If you try to kill it with the bomb, right? You don't care about the uh, the armor from the from your opponent well, anyway. Well, is the idea that he wants to clear it like that? Oh, okay, he's going to armor up. Oh, I thought he was going to play True Heart and be like, I feel safe on 16. You know, like, you feel pretty decent. 16 is yeah. actually a hard number to hit with just a Fire War Axe on, uh, on the board. But I'm surprised he didn't get True Heart there because, like you said, stacking up that four armor every turn will actually really helps in this matchup because you know there's only Grom that's really going to come out as burst. And now is it a problem that if... Oh, like, uh, oh wait, the Dr. Bomb is still alive. Hmm. <laughs> oh wait, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. But the opponent is pushed to use the Brawl anyway. So if a undamaged patron will win the Brawl, then you have a problem... No, you can there's, use there's the Shield Slam. There's a chance that you, you didn't have armor. to use Brawl there, right? So you had Shield Slam, Execute and Boom to actually kill three of the patrons, then you just leave the weak one up? Yep. But now he's pushed to use the shield slam. Yeah. Huh. Well, this is interesting. Is uh, now Crane has to make a decision. Should I? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, but do, so <laughs> this is really rough because it looks like oh yeah, Grom in a rage is actually yeah. awesome. But then when you see the executes in hand, it's like no, just do a Grom, just Grom and hit for four, and then in a rage next turn. But I guess the, the chance is just too good to pass, right? Yeah. You go for the Grom with the inner rage and the attack phase. Yep. Unfortunate for him, that will probably end of the game. Yeah, I mean, what other? I mean, we've seen Boom, haven't we? So uh, I don't think there are too many more outs left for Crane to actually win this, as we're going to probably see the Justicar come down along with uh, armoring up and then just go completely out of range of the Patron Yep. Welcome to the grand Agreed. Tournament. And yeah. he used two depths, by the way. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's got like. Almost no damage left, as far as I'm aware. Oh, that's damage. But the weapon will shut yeah. it down. Yeah, just trade the Justica. He just needs health, then the controller will win. And now he has two death bites to mess around with, so... <laughs> um, yeah, this is... Uh, he even gets the card draw as well, so... From the Acolyte and the Ghoul effect, so that's just pretty huge. But yeah, you're right, you just, you just throw the Justicar into, into the... You don't care about damage at this point, you just armor up past the uh, capabilities of the Patron Warrior to be able to burst. Second Brawl, look at that. Getting out of range quickly at 11 HP, Scruffy right now. You can deny the card draw with Execute, it's fine. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This changes everything. Time for the comeback. Well, <laughs> it looks like Crane will have a hard time wrapping up this game. He'll try to bait out some more information about uh, his opponent's deck, but I guess, I guess his opponent w probably will not play the second brawl at all. Yeah, <laughs> unless he's been totally beat out and like brawls with Grom on the board because he thinks he's going to survive and then kill him anyway. Very far fetched, and I doubt that's actually going to happen. Yeah, and what's good here is like uh, there is the execute, so four, five. So is he going to show the second bash? I mean, I guess you sort of presume a second bash. We've seen two so far. This, well, that's the second one in his hand, I think. Yeah, that's the second one. Yeah. Yeah, and I think maybe you presume it, so it's not too much of a big deal to actually not hide it. But as you said, it's all uh, all information for, for coming here. Well, you want to bash. win the game, right? So Yeah. yeah. You guard you your hand so much, you actually lose. And like, oh, oh, wait, that's uh, that was a misplay. So it's 1-1 one -one between uh, Crane and Scruffy. Both players won with Warrior. Right? So... It's kind of an unusual thing to um, to see in our tournament for the past two days.
Yeah. But now Crane has to switch. He has a rogue and a druid, right? No, paladin. Paladin. paladin, yeah. paladin. And we're, we're right. going to use the old inside information here. So you said he had a really good deck versus control yeah. warrior. So what, what's he bringing? <laughs> yeah, that will be the anything can happen with paladin. Oh, oh uh, nice. One of the Brilliant. first ones in the tournament. And he got another secret in the deck. Uh, I awesome. hope we will see it. Awesome, oh, because okay. I, I, I loved how Crane brought um, the Vorgan patron. Uh, to the G2 Class Legends tournament, and it was a pleasure to watch. So s to see him play a g unusual deck here, yeah. And and let's be honest as well. Although uh, you know everyone knows what this this Murloc deck basically does, but no one's gonna expect it, right? I'm pretty confident Scruffy sees the the Paladin in, in his lineup. He's like, you know, secret Paladin, pro you know, more than likely. Uh, but when he starts seeing those Murlocs pop out, that's definitely gonna be a, a little bit scary. It can be different also when you see a acolyte of pain in Paladin. Yeah, you start going like mm. wild okay. pyromancer. Like surely that's not good. Doom for Secret Paladin. <laughs> okay, now it's kind of yeah. different, right? Um, but uh, the I'm sure that uh, if Crane is building a deck against Contra Warrior with the anything can happen, and he has two of those in the deck because yeah. one is just not enough burst to come down with the, with the whole uh, with, uh, after the. Warriors just turtling up with the armor yeah. every single turn, right? So he needs uh, he needs more damage output. Yeah. So so do do you want to explain um basically the the overall idea of this uh, Murloc Paladin list and uh, and why it's good versus Control Warrior? You think? Yeah, for sure. Like I, I believe Crane he got it because he wants to counter Freeze Mage and he wants to counter Control Warrior, and it's just such a huge burst. It doesn't matter about the Justica. He will try to one shot. Then he's playing double dooms there. Just clear the board, wait for the late game, and do double anything can happen and finish the game that way. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because the, the Murlocs that die, uh, any Murlocs that die get summoned back with anything that is 10 mana. And then the crazier part is like you can't really ignore that kind of board. And then if it doesn't kill someone, the second anything just draws all the Murlocs back again. So you can get things like, you know, like yeah. four yeah, war like leaders. Or exactly. Like and, that, and then right? the damage just, like you said, the, the amount of tanking up kind of doesn't matter because the damage is so ludicrous if you yeah. can chain one after the other it's like i don't think like anyone can get to that much health to survive it will be a tough game but will he keep harrison jones he's actually running it in his warrior list as well yeah he just didn't want to lose to crane's <laughs> patron warrior he was <laughs> like you will not beat me with this deck so he didn't keep the harrison jones that means i would guess that he predicts that this is the secret secret palette Yep. Right, because he needs more answers early game and not a mid mid game answer to a weapon. Yep, and already we start to see some of those joyous Murlocs in Crane's hand. He does have the anything can happen now, which although he's a little bit too early, because he already has Murlocs, it's kind of okay-ish because you know you've got it. Because sometimes you can go through a game and actually not draw the, the card that makes the deck to a certain extent. Um, the, the rest of his hand seems okay though. And uh, again, you, you'll probably correct me, I've not played too much of this deck, i played a little bit, but with the Murlocs, a lot of it is you just play them. Because yeah. you don't care if they die, and you don't care, you know, like, if they have some impact on the game, which they will, because they need removing, they're going to push some damage, which is great. Um, but like, a lot of the time you just want them dead, so then anything can pull them out. It really depends on the version. I believe that's a big chance Crane will just go for the hero power here. Mm -hmm. um, and like, he knows that the game will last long. The only way he can lose this is against a Justica turn 6 and then around 40 or 50 health or something so he can survive the double anything uh, can happen combo. Especially that um, he mu probably is aware that his opponent plays double brawl. Right? So, yeah. so the anything can happen can be destroyed with a single brawl and a weapon finish, or a smash finish, or bash, bash finish. Yeah, and this is what the controller is going to have to navigate. He has to, on one hand, gain enough health not to die to combo in the first place, and on the other hand, have two brawls like <laughs> for, for both of them, because it's the only way he's actually going to, if he doesn't quite have the health, then he can like maybe brawl and hope he doesn't have the second one straight away, and then build the armor back up. So it's, uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting game. And even with the hero power, he could be thinking, yes, Crane's drawn really badly. He doesn't have a two drop. <laughs> and yeah. then he's like, next when this Murloc comes down, you're like, no. <laughs> this kind of sucks, though. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't the, the, the best thing in the world for him. Uh, do you... Do you just give the warrior two cards here? I, I don't know. It's a tough one. Well, he will get two cards anyway. Yeah. So yeah. now it's a question of how. At least two, right? Because if you use hero power, then you don't give, give out any informations, but your opponent 
will most likely uh, will most likely draw three cards from the Colored of Pain, or you give out the information immediately. Yep. What are you playing mm. by playing the Charging Murloc and killing the Acolyte of Pain, right? I think something you definitely don't do is play Humility on this board, as it's probably not going to have the biggest impact. Wow. Oh, what come are, on! No one, no one even smiled! That was clearly a joke, guys. <laughs> come on. It was a yoke. <laughs> I learned everything I know from you, Lothar. Oh. There's a bash, which was a crucial mid-game. I guess developing a weapon, even though it's off-curve, nothing yeah, doesn't I really hurt. But at the same time, you want to have another target for your Acolyte of Pain next turn, so maybe it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, do you think it's, it's just equip the weapon and not kill the 1-1? One -one? I was thinking about it. Oh, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna clear off the 1-1. One -one. Yeah, Crane didn't shield anything. He's probably playing a round placement of Kings or Ulderman or something. But um, yeah, he will see the Murloc soon. Yeah, this is a. Do you do you think it's a tough one again? This tur these turns are never too simple for Crane here because then he could like he could True Silver hide information you know for another turn, but True Silver into a one two, kind of rough. He's already got one card draw, and um, he could have played Old Murkai, but then that one gives the game away uh, and lets him know what deck he's playing, and also the weapon already clears it up because he would have took one damage from the Acolyte. So I think the True Silver is the best option overall there. It's not fantastic, but again, you just want the board to play, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. It was That's a really true. tough one. But there's the Justice card too hard. <sighs> the Probably way. will be played on turn three. Okay, now now that's that's a good uh, good turn, I guess. War leader plus Charger Murloc. Deal some damage, put on pressure on board, and push your opponent into reacting to that instead of developing the board. Yeah, yeah, and also kind of kind of awkward to deal with because the charge yeah, doesn't die to the weapon because it's buffed. So you'd have to go for the war leader first, then deal with the two one. Well, it, it will die, right? Because it's plus um, plus three, plus two, right? Uh, plus two, plus two. Uh, so yeah, it oh, it will. Sorry, it'll be on three. Yeah, yeah. for some reason yeah. I thought it'd be on four. All these Murloc it numbers, I can't do it. Basically, it will be a slightly... No, it, it will basically be a Cochrane Elite. Yeah. Yeah. It will just be a 4-2 minion, and then he will clear the wall leader and probably kill the 2-1. Yeah. Oh, he's got oh. the hero power. Instead of using the War Leader, interesting. Is he just forcing the axe onto the 2 1? So then he can play the War Leader later. Um, you know, just make it get slightly less value if it just clears up a 2 1 instead. Yeah, he will probably do the turn 7 with the War Leader and Old Mola guy to yeah. hit for 5 damage. Interesting. Like, this is the deck I don't have much experience with. I tried it a few times, but. Uh, I don't know, it's like sometimes the deck just doesn't find the anything can happen yeah. for the whole game and you can't finish it off. Yeah, I think so. I think on a like a base level everyone just views the deck as uh, yeah, you know, you just play Murlocs, then combo you know, like play anything at the end and then win. Um so and it's actually uh, you know, I think it's got much more depth. Like you look at players like Neville's who's uh, someone who mm -hmm. plays a lot of Murloc, uh, this Murloc Paladin list on, on ladder and performs quite well with it actually and has done many iterations of the list. For sure. That's the difference by Crane. He just draw the secret card from uh, his deck. He's playing one Kassan, as you can see. Yeah, to really lock out those free that f potential freeze mage. Yeah, for sure. That's the reason. Now Scruffy's like, oh, so a Kazan Mystic. Oh, even the BM though, I love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the attack will get rid of the um, Chasm Mystic. It's still, though, a 4 free minion, right? So it's quite a lot of damage. Yeah, and this actually uh, makes the weapon... Um, you know, it's one more weapon charge, right? And he wants to just guard the Murlocs, because although the Murlocs are fine if they die, it's better if they live, get some more damage on, and then, you know, they get even more value later on. So for now, one charging Murloc um, died. Right? Yep. So that's that oh yeah this god this is the deck where we have to keep like <laughs> the, the mental note of every single murloc yep. that's died to then work out damage because it's very important for the uh, potential damage burst that he that you can play sometimes you don't have the full combo sometimes you just have like three murlocs yeah. doesn't make sense to to play it and I think you always want like at least one war leader involved somewhere because oh, yeah, like sure. you know the extra damage is so much and making the minions so much more difficult to deal with. So there, that's definitely key. And he does have one in hand, as we've seen, so, you know, he, he can activate that whenever he wants. Yeah, for sure. Like, this game, it's not necessarily it will stay in that long. Like, the Robbie has taken a lot of damage, even though he draws Justica. 
Yeah, I mean, tw 20 health definitely is not anywhere close to a safe zone from air. Especially when I imagine we're getting to the point soon, especially with that second ward leader, where uh, Crane's probably going to commit to these Murlocs at some point. Because we're, we're edging towards turn 10, right? Yep. Do you think there's any value here in like the war leader, Murkai, and then humility on the 7-7? Seven -seven? Doesn't sound bad, to be honest. Yeah, and then probably go face with it, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that. just ignore the minions, because at this point, the more you push, and then, like, what, he's two turns away from uh, uh, anything can happen, so it gives him one additional turn to get the second war leader active, um, and then he has, like, Murkai, two war leaders, and the, and the charge. So that's um, six damage from the charging Morlock, and then Murkai will have six plus four, so that's 16 damage. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Well, it doesn't clear the board, and you are not pressuring his, uh, your opponent. Not sure about that. He probably wants to go for the full late game with the double combo. Yeah, so do you think he's just being patient here and just being like, I want to lock in double combo, because if you combo once, and then it gets dealt with like a brawl, and then you have like four turns for the warrior to armor up then, then suddenly it becomes a bit harder to deal with. Yeah, I believe it's working since um, Crane is losing the best Murlocs first. Like he got five Murlocs in the deck, and then he do the anything can happen, he will summon them, right? Um, so Like the full amount. Yeah. yeah, like he wants to have it so he can do it two times and probably mm -hmm. summon two Murloc guy. That's his style, I yeah. believe. So two war leaders, two Murkai, and uh, three charging small Murlocs. Yeah, like he will probably go for the legendary if he can. It depends on then he's doing the anything. Yeah, so, so now we're going to see how uh, Scruffy chooses to deal with this because it always feels terrible that you need to remove the minions off the board, but you just know they're going to come back a little bit later. Yeah. He does That's have true. shield block, bash, you know, the armor up. Uh, so he's definitely got, you know, the capability to gain a lot more health here. It's just how he chooses to actually do, uh, go about with the nine mana he's got. Whether he chooses to just play it all and then maybe drop the air, uh, try and get the armor smith in, but... Yeah, I believe he should just go for as much armor as possible. There's no reason to go offensive with extra or uh, execute or anything. Yeah. Just get the armor to survive the combo. Heal, yeah, but not really useful. Yeah, do you think we're just going to see lay on hands here? Yeah, I cycle so. through because the health just you know the control warrior is not just killing you straight at the moment. He's really going for the anthem. That's unexpected. Okay, so he's clearing off the armor damage. smith, um, just removing the the threat of a you know like a lot of armor gain from from that two, two oh. drop. The brawl top <laughs> deck, and the universal size brawl is drawn. Um, yeah, and there's a way to destroy the. Minion that will survive the brawl as well with the shield slam. You say that, isn't Dr. Boom just gonna survive? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> right. That's, oh, that's that would of be horrendous. Be true. So now they all die, so the pool with the dead Murlocs are, uh, are four war leaders, two Murkai, and two, two charges, and yeah. two blue guild warriors, yeah. right? But my question is how they're being counted for the second anything gonna happen? Which one? Yeah, what draws like what? Are yeah. oh, the first one to die being counted as the the first one to die? Yeah, it's the first one to die. It depends. Okay, on. so the last war leader will not be yeah. resurrected by the, the second uh, anything can happen in this situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so three war leaders, two guild blogger warriors, and two Murkai. Yeah. Right? So that is <laughs> plus six damage on each single minion. So we have six, twelve, 18, 24, then base 8, tw 32, and plus 6, 40, 48. This play is awesome. Sorry, Lothar. But the, <laughs> the, the, the Doomsayer just completely locks out potential Alex Straza. Because he just saw lay on hands, maybe feels like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. Alex Straza put a bit minion on the board. He's seen the humility. Um, so that, that could have been rough. So the Doomsayer is actually pretty cool there. I don't know how much of an impact it had, really, whether he was just going to shield block anyway, but still wow. pretty nice. Wait, how many cards were left for, for Crane? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like a lot, though. 12. Well, well, that's actually a lot. Yeah, that's actually a lot. I mean... He needs to pressure his opponent because he has, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, 48 damage from a empty board with anything can happen. But the warrior has a tank up. Mm -hmm. And he's able to kind of 
turtle up every you, single turn, right? So do you think because there's the equality in hand now, he can actually just go like True Silver, Acolyte, Aldor, Peacekeeper to just put stuff on the board to try and like again just keep the armor down? Um, because he has the equality and then either the weapon or the minions mm -hmm. to deal with something big from the warrior. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's just like, I think he just needs to do something, because now, like, the second lay on hands, he's going to just signal to uh, to Scuffy that he's got, you know, an opportunity to actually uh, play the Alex Draza next turn, but he did draw into the NFL. Okay, so, so uh, this is why I like the Paramount more than the Hero Power, because it deals for damage, right? Yeah. If your opponent doesn't... Uh, if, even if he kills it with a weapon, it still de deals free damage. So your opponent will be at 43 and you probably will kill it. The problem uh, you probably will kill your opponent with the anything can happen. The problem is the Belcher showed up. Yeah, yeah the Belcher was for sure a really good draw. And it really depends on the second brawl if it will come before the anything. Like Crane got the anything, but will he use it? Ooh. Whoa. Ooh. This is brave. <laughs> this is brave. <laughs> Shit. So that's game, right? Uh, if your math is correct, Lothar, and I have no, no doubts of judging you whatsoever. If so. I'm correct about <laughs> the order in which they are yeah. resurrected, yeah. right? I'm. Oh. So you sacrifice the pyromancer first, and you should be, and that should be the damage to kill your opponent. But I'm not sure. I'm I'm, I'm not the expert in this deck, so don't. Ah, you know, <laughs> don't kill me if I'm wrong. Twitch chat is probably. I cannot promise you this. Wait, what? So I'm guessing it's just not right. Okay, so you know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. really going with if Crane isn't doing this, then it isn't lethal because he's brought the deck. He, he well, he definitely knows it better than I do for a start. So uh, I'm pretty confident he, he's decided that isn't lethal and he wants to just build the board up, sort of neutralize the Alex Straza there and, uh, and just push now to reduce the armor down. I'm really curious to know. I'm really curious to know, you know, because. Um, this is a very interesting interaction, and if you clock the board right now, that means you can't really push for the damage with the anything can happen anyway, because the Belcher is actually a problem for you, for for the anything can happen player, because even if it dies, it still blocks one yeah. spot. You on only the board. have seven places on the board, right? Yes, so. exactly. The only thing, the, the only benefit to this is that if the minions stay on the board, then he can just continue to push, right, and just keep the armor down because he's currently hitting for more armor than the warrior can gain. So even you know like two, three turns down the line, he's still gonna you know do some more damage, and like even like just double heal, but back up to uh, you know back up to full actually would be pretty crazy. I believe he needs to do it since he can't suicide all his stuff. Like the Eldos Peacekeeper just have too much health, so I believe yeah. he will go double heal, but full face here. Yeah, and you've seen like Strauss, haven't you? So like, there's not a lot to actually be be too fearful mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. from the control warrior, and it puts another two three threes on the board. And uh, you know he wasn't ready to anything the previous turn, so he's probably not going to do it this turn, especially yeah, with three likely. minions on the board. <laughs> like it, it would be crazy. I like stacking up the weapon though because it's eight damage yep. in over, time, yeah. over time in, in the two turns and basically it's a charge minion. You still get the two heal, yeah. right? So it's still you know yeah. like pushing you a little bit further out. So I like this too. Not a bell hmm. So I guess he's gonna attack in now, kill off the, the pirate. Do, do you wanna kill off the pirate? He's, it's so weird, this matchup. But sometimes it's like, maybe you want to le leave some of this alive to, to just potentially cause more issues uh, with the anything. Uh, but the Pyramus is not such a big liability for the Paladin in this situation because he's not playing most of a battle. Yeah. And true. there's the equality. And the, the thing as well is that he could always attack in first, then, uh, then anything, and then the does the AoE kill the Pyro before the Murlocs are spawned? I mm -hmm, don't know, mm -hmm, uh, but there's a chance. Okay, so it goes for the quality clear this turn and solemn vigil, I guess. Or just play the thing? I'm not sure. Yeah. How many cards does he have back? Uh, around six, I would I would say. Man. Probably we'll see in a second. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, he's going for the card. Yeah, he's going for the, the cheap card draw to play both, I guess. Oh, oh he's Doctor playing Doctor Boom. Yeah, okay. How many cards were there? Uh, Three? No? Let's have a look at the second. I want it all, though. A second Kong, a second Doomsayer. Two cards Two. left. So he was at yeah. six cards. Yeah. Okay. Good, good counting. I didn't count. I was like, you know, going with my instinct, with my gut well, feeling. Well, either way, it's impressive. <laughs> and then the Doomsayer doing a similar job we saw uh, the, the first Doomsayer do. And kind of like, the Warrior doesn't normally have too many ways of dealing with it. Especially because I think, have we seen an Execute yet? I think we've seen at least one, right? We have seen one Execute. Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, the odds on being able to proc the Execute uh, and do it, you know, is pretty low. 
So uh, this is kind of awkward to Scruffy, where he's just looks like he's weighing up Shield Maiden just to gain the armor. Shield Maiden armor up, mm -hmm, still a significant mm -hmm. number. Um, but, you know, you do just lose that 5-5 five, five straight away, and the Warrior's actually struggling to put any pressure on the Paladin here. I'm really surprised by the fact that the anything can happen doesn't have more than 30 than 40 damage output after this first one, right? With the perfect perfect setup, right? Because it's free warriors. I don't know. He's going to throw the blue gill in there. Poke for two. I uh, need to ask a question about this. Yeah, we, we will investigate. Yeah. And for... Scruffy doesn't look good now, because even though the Big M Hunter will get rid of the um, the, 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 the Dr. Boom, the bombs will remain, and their actual will, will matter. The damage yeah. from the bombs might be a very and huge also, swing. And also, you kill the Boom, but you just make more space for Murlocs. <laughs> like, yeah. And the and the like the old Murkais do way more damage than, than Boom, uh, you know, like on, on the board anyway, so mm -hmm, it feels mm -hmm. really weird when you... Killing a Boom with Big Game Hunter doesn't feel great. Like That's when you know you're playing a weird deck. Well, you need to play the Big Game Hunter, and I guess you need to play the Beltran just armor up. Yeah, I believe as well. Yeah, that's I the think right this, yeah, that's, that's nothing not else does anything, yeah, does it? Exactly. Like, like, at least this is proactive a little bit. Playing Gromash here doesn't really guarantee Just throws him anything. out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, go on, Gromash, <laughs> deal with this, please. <laughs> Master Ball, <Kill> go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not inner rage for like 20 extra damage, Gromash? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, wow. He's going for the egg fight. He really wants the brawl, maybe. Oh. So, but the brawl is too late, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so do you actually just like equal? Mm. Yeah, I believe. Look at whether you call it in, trade the bombs in for the That's additional damage, and then, and then and then you, and then you leave one murloc on the board, so it's not as bad because the murloc's still mm. getting buffed from the end of in next turn. So, do you maximize the damage by having one less? War leader and plus one shot. No, that doesn't end up. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea anymore. You want the war leaders and Merlin yeah. guy. That's the best one for sure. So heal bot for the damage, I believe. I would say sure. so. Yeah. At this point, why not? For sure. Oh, that's the brawl. But yeah. It might not matter though. It might. It might just be one of the like the Grom effect we talked about early, where mm -hmm. you know the anything's okay. gonna come out when, when the game's over. Yeah. I believe Crane got this game. It sounds four but damage but from the it weapon. It didn't change, like the situation on the board didn't change from from the turn when he could have played the second. Anything can happen. Mm -hmm. So if he will have lethal this turn, he would, he would have it back then, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, he's on lower health now, right? Yeah, he's just he's waiting now because Crane can't go for the anything can happen since he has some useless cards on the battlefield. That's why I thought he was going to equality and yeah. then trade in the minions instead yeah, to make room. That's like this is why I like that yeah. about it. Because now it's kind of like, oh, like can I actually just get fatigued here? Because he just can't play it. Or he has to play it and hope there's no brawl. But obviously, every single card that gets drawn, like the warrior is very likely to have brawl. You have no way of clearing your own minions. And if Scruffy did plan that out, then hats off. Yeah, fair play to the guy. So what's... Hmm. I wonder how many cards the warrior has left here, because he could try and think about even fatigue's going to be tough with gaining four armor every turn. Well, you gain four armor. Because it's like he could fatigue him to whatever, and then do anything to push him to then fatigue kills him. Like that might be the only the only out here because he clearly doesn't have lethal because he would have done it now, right? Almost out of cards. Harrison. Does he Harrison? No, I don't think so. Cause then he can still suicide stuff. He needs a weapon. Does he have any weapons left? Because the weapon will be perfect solution to this uh, to this situation. He can push for damage to the face. So yeah, and still not kill the minions. Still not kill the minions, and get in range of a Gromer's charge yeah. right with the revenge. Well, again, that's sort of what you do in this in fatigue matchups, right? You set the Gromash mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. to uh, to put them into the next turn fatigue death. So you just wait yeah. wait it out and set that up. And it's similar to what I think Crane has to do now to w to win this game. Um, as we said earlier, if if anything isn't lethal, then you know like, that's the only out, right? He would have used it by now if it was uh, if it was guaranteed. Well, that's kind of so, so twenty eight, yeah. yeah. But then you have to minus off the Murlocs in order because there's already minions on the board. Two Murkais. So two is Sophie gonna clear, or will he just kill the Blue Grill? Like he can kill it without a problem, cause 
It, it doesn't doesn't actually change, change anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shield slam on the blue guy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be so good. I believe it's that or gonna use a minion. I don't like to just pass, yeah. Well, you can't really play the minion to make space, right? <laughs> That's why I would go for the shield slam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like the Murloc's now doing an additional two damage yeah. every turn. That If he killed it, well, you know what? The Murloc's gonna fill the board regardless. So this one Murloc... There's the death spot! And that will... That will, will actually it? be the game. Will it? Because... Well, can Crane not potentially... Crane will get 5 damage next turn, and that but means... How much damage does he have from anything, 18, though? 5... He will be dead to Gromash and... So, yeah, so he just has to cast it and see. I don't think that's in... No. Oh. Five. Yeah. It oh, is. really? It's, yeah. it's an oh, yeah, wow. it is an oh, Okay, whoa, look at whoa. Crane! <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm pretty confident Crane wasn't quite sure that no. So he was, <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, that was missing lethal for like 12 turns. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But hey, how? What? Oh, that, oh my god, what, what a game. game. And guess what, guys? We have another game to cast of that Murloc Paladin. Yeah, but... Oh. So, we need to check if it really works this way that the last... The order of the minions killed are getting resurrected with anything yeah. can happen. Or is it a random effect, right? Because yeah. if it's random... It can't, it can't really be anything else other than the, one of those two options, right? Yeah. Because like, nothing else would make sense. Yeah, exactly. It's either that or that. So if it, if it's in the order of them being killed, then you, then he would have lethal... The, 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 uh, the turn he the draw, the second anything can happen. If it's random, then I think he should have played it anyway. Like, yeah. Because... In this yeah, situation, well when when Scruffy actually figured it out how to win the game, and really well played by Scruffy, like he yeah. knew exactly what he needs to do to win the game. That was his last chance, right? So really well played. I wonder. I actually wonder how much overkill he had, because um, I didn't quite see the. I knew he had overkill because the weapon overkill. And he saw the over minion board, but um, for, for lethal, over uh, two, but this turn. Yeah, because I'm just wondering yeah, if he killed. We'll okay, cool. If he killed that two one, like turns ago because that was on the board for quite a while over one yeah actually over one so if so do you think if he shield slammed the murloc like five turns because that was on the board for ages right that two yeah. one yeah. murloc that would if have he killed it, that's, that was stacking the damage wasn't yes. it that's so it. scruffy would have won if he would shield slam the murloc the the first turn was available but the other two slots were taken yeah but this could have also pushed crane to actually play the end <laughs> gonna happen yeah Oh my god. And also, it's not often you actually say, if he did like an 8 damage shield slam on that 2-1 Murloc three turns ago, he would have like won. It's like there's such, a, <laughs> such a weird sentence to hear in Arston. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a fun game though. Definitely. That was, uh, that was a, lot of, a lot of fun. And Scruffy's got to compose himself now and think, can my Warlock beat this Murloc Paladin? <laughs> and I would honestly be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's, that's something that this deck does, right? It, a lot of the time when people... Are, like, I know I've played against it where you feel like you've done everything you can and then you still die because it, sometimes there just isn't a lot you can actually uh, actually do to, to compete. Hmm. Well, it's a zoo. Eh, it might... Oh, okay. It's a zoo. Yeah, just because there yeah. was like an owl, it could still be Reno, right? Because mm -hmm. it still true. plays but Peddler but and double, Boss. But yeah, double the, the double Peddler seems uh, a bit more standard. Oh, and a pyromancer and a quality already in hand. Yeah, I believe this matchup can work out for Crane if he's playing it right and got the fine draws. Like right now, double white pyromancer on starting hand is for sure useful. Yeah. Job done. Hmm. And then the opening hand. I mean, uh, let's not you know, let's not get this wrong. D double dark peddler is actually pretty good <laughs> as well. It's a nice opening, definitely. Uh, I mean, is this a matchup where you have to just completely go all in as the zoo? And just hope the Paladin can't heal or answer fast enough. Because he has one Power Overwhelming. There's a potential chance for two more, like, plus four damage in the form of another Power Overwhelming or a uh, or a Soul Fire or something. So, speaking of Soul Fire. Yeah, oh, my God. Fire. Does he pick oh. the Tide Caller yeah. to mess with his anything can happen? <laughs> Please. That's definitely the play. Oh, Take my it. God. Take it. That's actually sick. Because it, it will... Um, he can potentially, like, kill it first, right? And if that's the yeah. way it orders... Then that's crazy because he will just summon a tide caller. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. What a sick how, how is Scruffy not just smiling about that? <laughs> I, w I would struggle to hide that. I'd be like, oh, so you're playing Murlocs, are you? <laughs> well, uh, how about this? Boom, tide caller. It's the old school Murloc warlock. <laughs> that was a thing with the old oh blood dumps. That was so ridiculous. Oh, so it's Sea Giant Sue. 
So it's pretty reasonable. Um, oh, there's a PO as well. So uh, I like the PO just because I think like with this deck you can actually push because the only real heals are uh, lay on hands and heal bots. So if you can pressure so hard on turn five they have to heal bot, but you still have the board, then you can really just like continue to steamroll and push that. Yeah. I believe Power Worm is fine for sure, and he has a lot of one drops, and the curve is fine. Like yeah. So this is going to be a. And that's a oh, Doomsday okay. on the hand. Hmm. This is kind of tough. He can like do that and play like Humili on the on the two. Yeah, on the two two. I mean, this is not a, a amazing turn, but it definitely does the job, right? It just slows the Warlock down again, and because uh, I think one of the the really strong combos is uh, Humili and Doomsay, right? On a yeah. you know like on a big like a Doctor Boom, and you just humi Humili Doomsay, like okay, try and kill it. Um, this is looking okay. Um, Brain didn't even look like he reacted to this Murloc, which makes me think he's some kind of machine. Because um, I would have definitely, like, at least, you know, g gave it gave it a bit of a nod. Be like, all right, okay, cool. Smile or something like that. Exactly, just be like, yeah, okay. Um, hmm. Is This is a tough one as well. Is there any merit in just dropping a Doomsayer? Because you now have two. Yeah, I believe he will go for Doomsayer Hero Power. It's really important to Hero Power, because then the... Uh, Shruffy will go face and the hero power will die and if Crane draws solo and Vigil, he yeah. will get the reduction on it. Yeah. That's another little interaction that, you know, like, uh, so the, the the guys who have played this deck less uh, won't, you know, maybe won't think about because of the way it Doomsday actually kills stuff on your turn. Uh, so it does reduce the uh, the cost of Solemn Vigil. I'm trying to find the information about anything can happen. Are you trying to see anything can happen maths? I know Subtle was doing a lot of maths. No, no, I'm just trying to, like, the math is okay. It's not a problem, but... Okay. Uh, but the order. Oh, the ordering, yeah. Okay, so um, he did play the Peacekeeper uh, to reduce the attack by one on the Imgang boss, but Imgang boss is still going to be a bit of a problem by uh, you know creating uh, those tokens. And this is kind of funny. So, like, on one aspect, the Tidecaller being being present on the board, um, if it dies, it causes the anything potentially to be awkward. But also, it kind of stops him playing something like a War Leader. Oh. <laughs> uh, for, for, for example, uh, got, got that one. It's uh, not only buff from the basics of the war leader, but it's also buff for plus plus yeah, one. Yeah, plus one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is um, kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, the war leader will be sad here. <laughs> Feels well, bad, Murloc, yes. indeed. Um, this is tough because it's not representing much damage, and he's on twenty nine health. So it, there's, it's there even opportunity to just like just hero power past this turn. Because I feel oh. like... Whoa. Okay, so the Murlocs to be summoned are chosen randomly from the list of Murlocs that have died this game. Oh, wow, okay. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's just like almost impossible to manage. And we'll oh. probably explain Crane's reluctance. Because if he got the wrong Murlocs, could he potentially have not? But it? it was very limited. He had eight Murlocs. So only if you wouldn't get two old Murk eyes, that was the only outcome that wouldn't give him the lethal. Yeah. Because he had four war leaders, two two Murkais, and four charging, uh, four Blugel warriors. No, sorry, That's two three, two yeah. two yeah. Blugel warriors, two Murkais, oh, and board, right? four yeah. four leaders. So if you would have the worst example, which was four war leaders, two Blugel warriors, and one Murkai, then three charging Murlocs, but. Each of them well, has he had plus one, he eight. had one less space as well because there was already two one on the board. The first time. Oh, earlier earlier on, right? So. Right, right. Uh, that's plus eight. I'm sorry, I'm still stuck in that game. But <laughs> it's just so well. The, well pretty fun so things happening here, right? anyway, because yeah. the fact that Scruffy was just straight up like uh, emoting because that wall leader did come down. He does get the sea giant down, and we can see that uh, you know equality wild pyro is going to get get some work done. Uh, but there'll still be the tokens left afterwards. Hmm. You guys, cast. I will be, I will be doing the map. Okay. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. wild pyro quality just looks too good. I was, I was looking at like quality phase tank with true silver, maybe. Uh, but this is pretty nice, and this also is a cool play because we can see three power of water. So there's one for each minion if he really wants to just spread that around. But he can actually kill this doomsayer. But is it worth it? Um, I, I believe he should start life taming. And see yeah, what's I think like sure. this just doesn't gain you enough. You've not really got a board to actually guard here. Oh. So the worst case scenario was 37 damage. And wasn't he above 40 on the first turn we said? Was he on like 42 or something? It I'm was 42. Yeah, I'm so thinking he was the, on like... The worst case scenario yeah, was yeah, as 37. Yeah. And you still have a full board of Murlocs. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
So he is going to PO, get the Argus down and trade. This is okay, just only spending one. Um, you still build up a bit of a board. And he has Lothab as well, so he can effectively uh, come to 10 if he wants to. Just buy himself a, an mm -hmm. additional turn of saying, you, you are not going to anything me whatsoever. Because um, I'm pretty confident no one can get that much mana. Uh, so yeah, Lothab's actually pretty key and could actually uh, you know really help close out this game. Is like He could even Lothab next turn to lock out Leon hands and he has double power overwhelming in hand. So that could definitely be a, a little bit scary. But he needs a temple swing. This is why the, the weapon needs to come down this turn. Weapon plus Bluegill Warrior, kill the minions yeah. and clean up the turn after an additional minion would be the what most important fall for Krang right now, I guess. Oh, he goes for the risky route with, the du uh, with Doomsayer. I mean, it kind of acts like a lay on hands without the draw, right? Because it will soak around six, uh, sorry, around seven yeah. to nine damage, right? Yeah. So, so what do you guys like here? Do you like Lothab and, and a, uh, a power overwhelming and then trade with the two minions on board, leave the 2-2 two, two taunt up and have the Lothab behind it? I guess you have to do yeah, it. Yeah, I believe I you think you lose too much, right? But like, Lothab is really good into a uh, Crane's turn 8. He knows that that will be a lay on hands. Yeah. But yeah, it's a real tough matchup. Like, no one practiced to play against the anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone's furiously practicing against anything just in case anything does happen. Um, so yeah, we are, it does look like we're going to go for the Lothab to be. I like this because your Lothab still guarded behind the, the taunt of the 2-2. Um, so that feels pretty good. You lock out the Lion Hands and now um, Crane has to have an answer. And he does have the Blue Girl Warrior to actually push through the taunt. Uh, but he can actually... F oh, oh, now we can. Because uh, the second... That is actually an insane draw. So he can actually clear the board, which is pretty huge, and uh, open himself up for Lion Hands next turn. Is there any reason you wouldn't... I yeah, yeah, you it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the stall then was like, have I missed something really obvious? It's just the fact that you play around Defend of Argus, Abusive Surgeons, yeah. uh, additional POs, of, but you saw too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it also, uh, Dial of Alpha, what else? Sea Giant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that, that low third proc in the Sea Giant early. Um, oh, okay, so uh, he's definitely got more sustain. I. Yeah, he I think go he goes man, for lay on yes. hands, right? You need the cards, right? Yes. That's that's the real yes. problem right now. You need, sure. the card. you need the cards. Well played. <laughs> this emote usage is fantastic. Um, the good thing here, though, for Scruffy is that these minions kind of lend themselves towards Gormok as well. So mm -hmm. that could be pretty nice. And even now a Voidwalker to, uh, to defend Gormok if needed. What? Um, Whoa, oh, he's what? playing Leroy? Okay, Ooh. that's going to be an unexpected 10 damage with the PO. Yeah, for sure. So... Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, Lira is really fancy. It's working with the Seed Giants. Um. So, yeah, okay. So I was wondering, uh, it was interesting that he tapped as, as opposed to playing like he could have Voidwalker, Argus, mm -hmm. and then played Gormok just to push damage. Because he's seen a, he's seen an equality already, But right? he has to play uh, around anything can happen this turn, right? How many Merlocks are dead? Yeah, but he War still puts up two taunts yeah. regardless, right? Wall so leader? he's tapped into Leroy, he could have not, and played Void Walker and play two more taunts. Oh, you mean attack into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, then he could have, like, you know, he's generated enough minions. I mean, he could just not defend of Argus this turn, but it was just interesting that he had, like, the Argus, the Gormok, and another taunt, and chose to actually tap instead. So, I mean, this is still good. You know, mm -hmm. he can just Argus next turn, but... A big sp spear, though, landed for the additional damage. When you think about it, Gormok is ridiculous, right? When you have, But it's kind of a win more card. But it to, to a certain extent, I think in this, in these fo current forms of Zoo, it's actually, it's not like weird to have a board, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, good if you've got a board, but it's the only way you ever win a match. So it's not like, oh, well, I, you know, I had a massive board anyway, so I win. It's just that, yeah, I build a bit of a board as part of the deck style in itself. I just wanted to uh, say that it's, it's a win more card, but it's not a win more card with bad stats like Enhance or Meccano. Yeah. Yeah, even as um, like the 4-4, the four four, sometimes you play it as a 4-4, four four, right? Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes like that's that, just right? the right play, and you know yeah. what? It's pretty decent, because it's, oh, it's not like over-costed for what it does, I think. Mm -hmm. it, it's really tough to use, and you can use it in many different ways. Like, you can use it with Brand Bond Bird. Against, Which is uh, pretty awesome. I think everyone can admit, like, sniping a giant with Gormok is pretty <laughs> sick. <laughs> or just finish up the Yeah, game, or just 8 to face. <laughs> like... Really it's good like against Freeze Mage. RPG to the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is another interesting turn. Um, do you think there was a requirement to tap there? 
Well, he did get uh, Dr. Boom, right? But <laughs> I just feel like, cause, because turn 10's open, you've seen Murlocs, and he's only on 17. Like, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I've, I mean, I've not done the Murloc math. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe it doesn't matter who's who's dead from 19 or 17. But I'm just interested in that like, he tapped when he could have probably... Uh, I mean, well, could he have squeezed much more in? Maybe not. Yeah. I, I don't think he should trade the Wally. They will revive anyways if anything can happen co will come. But probably the L does. Oh, he's training both. Yeah. I think yeah, at this point, we, this is interesting, because at this point with Leroy, I thought you'd just push. Yeah. And you've seen lay on hands, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you just push, and then you have 10 damage from hand, potentially more if um, if you know like if you draw into maybe I think we've only seen one abusive so far, so you know you can potentially even just squeeze a little bit more damage out of it. Look at that! That oh. is the perfect draw. Yeah. You clean up the entire board. Double consecration. Because you deal the two damage to the egg, you deal the two damage to uh, the hunted creeper, you kill the, you kill two, the first three. wave. Right, you kill the first wave and then you finish yeah. up the Nerubian Spider with the uh, Truce of the Chamber. Yeah. This is actually pretty insane. And you still get the token. Wow! Which is actually, you know, it's actually yeah, reasonable. It's actually yeah, matters, it's yeah. actually... <laughs> you laugh a little bit, but... <laughs> no, no, that's just, yeah. you know, kind of taunting you, but... Yeah. I'm, I'm used to it, man, I'm used to it. Um, but yeah, as we just tick away on the clock here, <laughs> um, wants to hurry up to spe speed up this game. Hmm. So now, like, every turn is scary, and we can sit look at Scruffy's face, he's like, <laughs> oh god, please, please that one card in hand. Um, I think this is just a pretty straightforward boom egg. Well, turn. Crane is around 12 cards in his deck, right? So there's a lot of chances to draw the anything can happen next turn. And there are two war leaders in there, and at least one blue guild warrior, so that's no six Merkai, damage. Though, right? No Merkai, though, uh, right? Uh, no and the not... Oh, and the Ty Oracle, Collar. Right? Ty, Ty Collar, yes, Ty Collar, yes. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I'm just interested. That Scruffy's probably just sat thinking here, but I don't think live tap is ever an option when you have this play. <laughs> like this sets up, you know, like lethal next turn. Oh, he's already well played. He thinks he has it. No, no, no. He shouldn't. Uh, oh. Oh, wait. oh, what does? What does that this? No, 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 no. Then he won't have lethal. Is he trying to do this to the egg? Do you think? I'm really not sure. So if he does it to the, the egg, he wants four damage, right? Did he count what? the murlocs and then he knows that it's like exactly what? twelve? From the from the anything hmm. can happen. That was interesting. I thought if he'd done it on the egg, it would make a bit more sense because then he has four more power on the board for the next turn with Leroy, uh, mm -hmm. Leroy as well. Mm -hmm. So that's already ten. Mm -hmm. um, but the bomb. I mean, he really wanted to snipe that one. Uh, I'm not sure which Merlin died this game or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is nobody why. knows anymore. Crane, what are you doing to us? Oh, this game. And that's almost game. Oh, oh is this, is this bomb? Bomb talk. <laughs> wow. So the PO might have cost him the yeah. game yeah. and the entire match. Yeah, I, I really, I'd be amazed unless he unless he tells us later where like yeah you know with the Murloc math like that one one. Maybe that was exactly twelve. Yeah, I, ma um, maybe like I, I'm I'm not hundred percent sure, but I just I don't know. <laughs> let's see. That's I'm the only reason we can think, right? There's no other way. You'd you'd mm -hmm. be too bothered about one. Yeah, one. yeah, that that was the only reason to do that. Oh! oh! Wow! <laughs> Wait! Uh, use the knife juggler. juggler first! Yeah. Yes. Knife juggler! No! Knife juggler first! Please! <laughs> wow, look at that gun! Look at that animation! That is a. Did you see that? That is about to kill did a doctor. Did you see Boone. the ball that he's using to shoot? <laughs> yeah. It's like so <laughs> huge. No wonder he kills the big guys with it. Oh. Uh, yeah, you go face, right? There's. You just go face. <laughs> you, you should use knife jacker to lower the chance of the bombs to hit your face. Yep. Yeah. With the second What's the reason up? not to play you to clear? Wow, that's actually huge too. Because now we can set up a defensive board against the situation. You can kill the big game hunter. Pr pray don't you don't hit the egg. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, this game is way too oh close. My God. Oh, he's just oh, going to go. Oh, okay. the so he's not even risking it. He's not, well, he, he, well, he a doesn't risk. know there's yeah, a Leroy yeah, yeah, Jenkins, yeah. right? He's only playing around Doomguard. Oh, my God. Double juggler Leroy. Go. Oh. Oh, this is. Do you have to trade into the belch and then go for the double juggler? <sighs> Let's think. Oh, Ooh, the tab. Oh, my God. This guy. This guy's brave. Trade first, I believe. Why trade the first? With the Dr. Boom. Um, so the Juggles uh, hit the um, the 1-2 potentially as opposed to the Belcher? I suppose one Juggle's okay, right? 
Yeah. Because then you trade the four two in. And then you then, then your knife juggler dies. Use the knife juggler now and see what's happened. But yeah, I would do like that. Yeah. And then attack with the big M hunter as well into the one two. Yeah. Oh my god, this is tense. You play the sea giant before the juggle, right? Because you want the bombs to hit, not face. Don't you play? Nah, I was thinking about. Nah, you can play the Leroy. Nah, I think you just juggle sea giant, right? Yeah, I believe well, sea giant first. Quick! Oh! 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 That's oh! the best possible outcome. Oh, and only for oh one. God. <laughs> Come on! Oh my! Anything? Equality, Ooh. that's not it. Is that, that's just game, right? Yeah. Take, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there's like 15 damage from two minions yeah. on board. All so. right. I was just double checking. Wow, what What a game. <sighs> wow, that was close. Need to yeah. recover after that one. <laughs> that was there were so many outs, too. Like, additional truce of a champion to anything can happen. And then I'm thinking about it. <laughs> 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 I was looking. Yeah. I was looking well, for other the options. Thing, the thing, thing is, as well, like Crane didn't have very many cards left, right? So, yeah. so the odds on drawing them were quite high. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, pff, wow, what, what a game! But also bear in mind that without the um, the the interesting PO play, uh, I'll say with on on the boom bot, that mm -hmm. would have actually ended a bit earlier, right? Because yeah. it would have Leroy would power overwhelming and, and then just push for the extra damage with the boom. So, but he didn't show the Leroy. Yeah, that's actually pretty big. Yeah, so that's true. So Crane doesn't have a, a slightest idea of what is what can happen next. Yeah. next and then we game, see the MVP, right? the Tide Caller, <laughs> come into hand. If he plays the Leroy, that means he plays an Cancel Mechanic too. I would say. Well, that that's what's getting really strange now. So there was um very like defined lines between the curve out at five zoo and then this new like fairly newish Sea Giant zoo with the Enhanced Mechanic and the Leroy. But now what I've been seeing is like like hybrids of those two decks because the Sea Giant doesn't normally play Doom Guards, but then I think we saw someone play earlier today that had Sea Giants and Doom Guards in the deck. So there really can just be a mix of anything, and like some aren't playing Leroy, some mm -hmm. are. Whereas mm -hmm. Leroy is in the standard Sea Giant list. So um, I think we've seen it, you know, like some hybrids. So there's always a chance that you know Leroy isn't expected, or Enhanced Mechanic might not be in there. Because I think a lot of players feel the way you do, Lothar, in um, in that they don't really like the card too much mm -hmm. because it just doesn't uh, often have a big enough impact when the game's like. You I, would, for the I would game. rather have Gormok than yeah. than Enhanced Mechanic. Yeah. Because if you if you have uh, like when you play Gormok, you probably will use your Hunted Creepers, Implosion, or um, Imp Gang Boss to. To get more minions, to get the eff effect from the from the Gormok. but when you want to play Encanto Mechano, you want the minions to be available to attack this turn, yep. and usually you don't want them to have one attack. So, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of different styles about the zoo. Like there's some people here, like Tice, who's playing Doom God and Sea Giant. Yep. Then I'm also I only play Sea Giants, and yeah, like we can see, there's a lot of unexpected stuff, like Leroy Jenkins. So. Uh, yeah, I, I really um I, I really like the flexibility in decks like that. The way Zoo has so many different slight variations. Same with Reno Lock. You know, there's especially in a Reno deck, there's so much room for for you know slight card changes. But this is actually going down to the wire now. So Crane versus Scruffy, Warlock versus Rogue. Who do you think's favorite here? Oh, I'm um, yeah, like Crane's Rogue deck, it really surprised me he bring it. I know that we talked about it, but I believe he got a chance, but Scruffy can have so much stuff we won't expect, like the Leroy Jenkins. And we also saw Kassan last game, so uh, Yeah. Is it um is it like anything crazy about the rogue deck or is it fairly standard? I believe it's pretty standard. Yeah. Okay. We see the oil, so you know, he has the coin. That's yeah, a huge which deal. Which is actually yeah, uh, yeah, it's really big bonus actually. There's also a flame imp in the Sea Giant Zoo. That's not yeah. that normally. Okay, and uh, although the f you know, speaking of the flame imp, really good one drop for the zoo, uh, getting a quick start there. But you know, uh, Crane does have the ants in the form of a, a pretty reasonable backstab. That's like the, the dream to have against. Is that just zoo. like the best opening full stop, having backstab and then coin SI. There's only deadly poison missing here. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's looking really good for Crane. If but it doesn't mean he won the game. No, so of course. Let's see, see the Zulu uh, hand is pretty good as well, like a 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop. Yeah. So. Leroy is probably going to just let the hand down a little bit by turning up early to the party there. Um, but yeah, not too bad. A Dr. Boom, another card that might be a little bit, you know, required a little bit late. Oh, and th these aren't really the best uh, the best cards you could hope from the Discovery either. But I believe taking multi card was for sure the best thing, since that will come some minion with free health and the in-game boss has yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So now uh, we just see the coin SI, not too much of a surprise. Really nice tempo swing, something that Rogue can do very well. Uh, the very swift answer from Scruffy with the Imp Gang boss. These guys are playing really quick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the plays are pretty straightforward, to be honest, but still, like, <laughs> you know, I think I think a lot of players like to take time because they have the time. So, you know, why not just, like, chill out a bit, you know, for every turn and just, uh, you know, j just go slowly. But these guys definitely know what they want, probably feeling a bit tense uh, with this being the uh, be all and end all of the set. Probably Crane knows that um, making quick decisions will affect his opponent to make quick decisions also. And Crane feels more comfortable on the broadcast tournament, so it might affect Scruffy to, you know, maybe make a mistake. Yeah, as actually developed tactic in uh, in other card games yeah. when you Just push like the pace mentally of the game, pressure someone. Yeah. You you mentally push him to your pace, your own yeah. pace. So he tried to tried to match it up uh, to the way of your of your way of playing the game. Yeah. Um, so I actually I, on this turn really like just hero power and go face. Why, you know, why not sap? Yeah, he really. I, I well, think uh, yeah, I was just looking at Violet Teach to prep sap next turn. Yeah, um, you will still have some like eviscerate top deck next turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you Good definitely better at the game than I am. <laughs> you like? No, it's fine. I yeah, will just, just draw just what watch. I need. Just, just watch. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Eviscerate top deck. Easy peasy. Well, actually, Close that's foot. not that bad, but uh, could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so now like the the Violet Teacher will go well could go down, but now it just yeah. feels like yeah, it's too good not to play, right? Like, While you yeah. continue the pressure, yeah. With five health as well, it's kind of awkward to deal with. Uh, you're not as vulnerable to abusive from the Imp Gang boss, abusive sergeant, um, and like requires something like double abusive or like a PO in which you're pretty okay a PO going on to an Imp Gang boss. Oh, he's gonna go for the oh, he has the coil as well actually. Yeah. This is sick. Oh. Actually it's kind of upset, probably. <laughs> He's like, oh, I kind of wanted to call that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. He should probably light up. Yeah. He will. But there's no nothing else to do, right? Yeah, I mean, he's going. He's getting slightly low on health on 19. Uh, but because he's in such a commanding, you know, lead on the board, then you can afford to do that because the rogue's gonna obviously have to start dealing, uh, oh, dealing with the board prep. itself. Yeah, remember yeah. the prep. <laughs> oh that yeah, was important. Yeah, he definitely wants to get this Vancleave out. Yeah. Well, huh? he committed to the to the play, right? So. Yeah. Six, now six it's, it's actually all looking um, reasonable, at least for Crane, when he can go into Lotheb into uh, and then Doctor Boom the next turn. Slightly off curve mm -hmm, with Lotheb, mm -hmm. but definitely not bad follow-up considering you know the board state at the moment. Yep. Yeah, I believe it's been pretty good for Crane. Let's see. Three down. No, don't play the Die Wolf Alpha right now. I think it's a mistake because your opponent will probably ignore um, ignore the one ones because you're aware that they will not trade. With the six six, right? Or maybe not. I think he needs to risk it since it's looking so bad for him right now. But hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure about it. But oh, he's oh, wow. This is kind of <laughs> it may be inadvertently played around uh, Gormok here as well. Because if it, if <laughs> oh. it not be serious, <laughs> yeah. if he left it up, Gormok would have been really good because then it's just the Gormok and then one imp from That's the Direwolf buff yeah. to trade into the Van Cleef. Uh, so that could have been really good, but you know what? When you can't go mock, boom, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty that good uh, fallback. That was a ballsy play, though. Doctor Boom just on an 11 damage rogue yeah. board. But remember that Crane doesn't know that he's playing Leroy. Yep. So yeah, and he will make calculation calculations for Doomguard with PO, and that's nine damage, an example, right? So nine damage. Wow, oh, I, I love this. I love this complete Nine, ultimate 12, chicken here. 18, 22 damage. Right? Yep. Uh, it looks That's like it. it. Yeah, wow. Even more. No, wait. It's 22. <laughs> Even, and look at that board to end the game on. It's not often you see 14 minions on a board. He he did count the Doom Guard, which was one off. But Lero Jenkins pushed it to the limits and finished after a perfect lethal 22 damage. Wow. Well, that was unexpected for Crane. I'm sure of that. He didn't think about the Leroy, and that was actually important because he, I'm sure that he would have changed his mind this turn about trading with the Velotab if the, the Leroy Jenkins would have been popped last game. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. then he's like, okay, so there's Leroy. Yeah, so it's, that it's, six it's, it's something you count, right? Yeah. If you know it's there, 100%. Yeah, exactly. So I guess that was a huge factor, right? Yeah, I mean. In the deciding, in the deciding game. Yeah, and the set overall. 
like the whole set was just nuts. Like it was really crazy from the Patron Warrior nearly beating um n nearly beating the uh, thingy. And uh, the Patron Warrior nearly beating the Control Warrior as well, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, Murloc Paladin yeah. being a But we have, <laughs> we have Scruff here, congrats, man. Thanks. You advanced to the top eight, yeah. so you got $1,000 already, two points for the HCT, which is awesome. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I see you're very happy, so... <laughs> I, I, like, I didn't deserve the last game, I guess. It was like, uh, if he went face, face, like, he set up little, yeah, sure, but I don't know, I was like, he's, uh, he's just going to play oil and it's over yeah. but uh, that was a play to win and we talked about yeah. it a lot yeah, yeah. if you if your chances are slim you go for the only play that can win you the game and that was the correct yeah, I, I correct tried. one yeah, yeah. yeah also i have a question for you yeah. um the game against paladin when you po'd the bomb yeah i was like if he he, he had la he had one card mm -hmm. he didn't play like like i don't know two three turns and he played two warriors and two war leaders right so mm -hmm. it was so those 12. 12 plus the, the dude. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, yeah, it was it will be little if I didn't play the PO, but if I hit the hit the dude and he had the anything, it was like one off and it yeah. yeah, okay. was my only chance, I guess. Yeah, that, that was our, uh, it our wasn't assumption. It was the play to win, but yeah. yeah. yeah but you had the, the board anyway, and that was the only way you can yeah, lose yeah, practically yeah. the game, right? So it was on, a, on the edge of a knife, you can yeah. say. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, um, uh, were you very surprised to see the Murloc piled in? Yeah. I don't think not, we weren't expecting yeah. it. I like. was like, now I have Warrior and I get crushed by by Secret Paladin and this was even worse, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was close. The game versus the Murloc Paladin with Warrior was like one turn and then he, he got to the legendary Murlocs and mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. exactly little, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was sitting on it for a long time with the second half yeah, that yeah, can happen. Yeah, of course. Like... But I, w I was thinking about clearing the board and I realized that he will get like seven Merlocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I tried to outlast the game as, as long as it was possible. Mm. Well, you did good. You advanced to the top eight and yeah. now you wait for your next opponent, right? Or yeah. you already know him. Uh, I mean, it's it's Gianni Druid. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. It's Gianni yeah. so the Polish player. Okay, good. Okay. Nice. No, it was nice to have you here and uh, congrats again. Now we can watch the games and chill and Thank prepare you. mentally for the next for the next stage. You can also change the deck list, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I can. I, I would think about it this evening. Cool. Bring him a lot, pal, then. Not really, not really. Any other questions? Uh, Tessin? Yeah, one question. There's a lot of different uh, suit decks here. Why Leroy? Uh, I saw it uh, at American Championship. Chucky played this version. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had uh, Enhancer Meccano, and I play Gormok. Mm -hmm. Because I just feel like I'm not lucky for the, the win few <laughs> reason. It's just like four damage is always four damage, yeah. <laughs> but it's the Chucky's version with Leroy and double C giant. Okay. And, That's al and that's also the importance of uh, in the uh, not your last game, the one before, where you had Leroy and you didn't yeah. actually end up playing it, and then it actually worked out that having the Leroy and that slightly yeah, extra he damage yeah, and maybe he a bit he of a didn't surprise. Know, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was really huge. So uh, yeah, w well played and congratulations. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be we'll be going to a short break to prepare for the next match. And uh, we have two matches left today, right? We have done I six. Say yes. I mean, yeah, we've got two matches left. It's a long day. Yeah, the, the, the tracker in the bottom then said like longest game, thirty-seven turns was the one oh in that set. So God. we've put in some work, guys. So good, good job testing as well. Yeah. Casting that was the first cast I believe you've done. Yeah, first so, time. Uh, yeah, good job. Yeah. Man. good job, man. And uh, we'll be. We'll be going to a short break, so don't go anywhere. More hearts on in a few minutes.